So we're still talking about uh, reaction forces, but now we're gonna apply it into the 3D space. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at, uh, the first one we're gonna look at is the smooth contact force. So most of, most of this stuff is redundant, um, but what we're gonna do, and you, you basically apply the same concepts of how you would imagine it react in the real world. So we're gonna look at smooth surface contact, which is probably the simplest of the cases. So what we have, we have to define our axes now, a right-hand Cartesian, or right-hand coordinate system. So coordinate, coordinate, that's a weird word. Um, uh, here we go, so we have our axes, so X, Y, and Z. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna draw uh, a smooth contact, so we have some body, maybe a rod or something, line in space like that. So the only force that acts upon this object is the normal force. And basically that is the force perpendicular to the contact surface. So in this case, it's touching the XY plane. So we say it's perpendicular to the XY plane, which is that. This is a very simple one. And then we could do um, another one, which is basically the same thing, but it's not a smooth surface, it's a rough surface. So what we have here, we have a rough, that is not the color I want, uh, rough surface contact, so rough surface contact. So we have our axes again, so X, Y, and Z. And then we have uh, the, the same body, but instead this is a rough surface. So again we have the normal force, which applies perpendicular to the surface of contact. So that is that, that stays the same. However, there is also a frictional force that is being applied. So that is usually uh, depending on how um, this rod is, how the forces are interacting with this rod. So in a general sense, there's a force being applied in F in that direction and that's just basically the frictional force being applied at the point of contact. So the next thing we're going to look at is the ball and socket. Um, this is kind of a weird one to draw. So what we have, we have a ball, so let's see if I could draw this. So we have a ball like that and it's like that. And what we have here is that there's a rod connected to it like that, and then we have that. So that's a ball right here, and this is a socket, and connected to the ball is some rod. We could define our axes again, so this will be in that direction. So X, Y, and Z. I realized I didn't name this, so this is ball and socket. So what we're gonna do here is that this ball allows this rod to rotate freely in any direction. So what we can do is draw the reaction forces. So the only thing that it can't do is actually translate in space. So there's a reaction force going this way, Fy. There's a reaction force going this way, Fx. There's a reaction force going that way, Fz. And there are no moments on this component. The next thing we're gonna look at is called the hinge. This is like a hinge on your door and this is how it's drawn. So we have this being going this way. That's basically the axis of rotation. And then you have some sort of rectangle going like this. So that's like the thing that's, that's on your door right now. So here's that, there's that. And I'm not gonna draw the axis because I don't feel like it, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna define the reaction forces. So what actually can happen is that this hinge right here allows rotation along uh, the, the hinge itself. Like you wanna, you could rotate in that direction. That is fine. However, it cannot translate. So there's a force going this way, Fz. There's a force going this way, um, Fx or Fy and there's a force going this way, F, 
x. So this, there's no moment along this axis because it, it is allowed to rotate. However, it cannot rotate in this direction and it cannot rotate in this direction. So there's a moment going this way, we call moment z, and there's a moment going this way, no moment around y. And again, the way these arrows point are arbitrary, it, it will work out in the problem as long as you're consistent with your signs and your definitions of your Cartesian plane or Cartesian coordinate system. So the next thing we're going to look at is this idea or this component called a bearing, which is basically the same thing as a hinge, but it's called differently and it looks different. So um, bearings look like this, so it's like a rod going through a hole and then there's like a little support thing that keeps the rod in place and then this continues outward. All right, so the reaction forces for this one, as we can see, that there's a reaction force in this direction because the rod itself cannot actually move in this direction. So there's a reaction force going this way. And then there's a reaction force going this way because this whole system is planted on the ground. So we can't move in this direction. So there's a reaction force going that way. And then there's also a reaction force going upward because again this cannot translate because it is fixed to some ground so there's fz and the only point of rotation that is allowed is along this axis x so this thing can rotate in that direction so but in every other direction it cannot rotate so this whole body right here cannot rotate in that direction and it cannot rotate in that direction so that means there's a reaction moment being applied, so this will be mz and my. The next thing we're going to look at is this uh, fixed support. So what we're going to do is draw a fixed support in three dimensions, and this is probably the the easiest one. I can't spell, spell support. Um, this is probably the easiest one of them all. So we have this one. I think I'm going to have to draw the axes, unfortunately. So we have this x, y, and z. And then what we're going to do, we're going to draw um, a support. So a good one would be, this is like planted on the ground, so it'd be like that. There's a rod, and this is planted onto this. So it looks something like that where this bottom piece is connected to the plane x, y, and x, y does not move. So we can apply the reaction forces onto this. So this, this rod or this fixed support cannot move or rotate in any direction. So this is why it's easy because basically all you have to do is apply, apply your reaction forces and moments to every direction of the rod. So what we can do, we put that, and that's Fz, because it cannot move upward, Fy, because it cannot move to the side, and similarly, Fx. And as we said before, it cannot rotate, so there's a moment going this way, there's a moment going this way, and there's a moment going this way, because it cannot rotate, so Mz. So those are all the reaction forces for various mechanical components that are used in various problems. And it's up to you to memorize them, but some of them are pretty intuitive. Um, just understand what can rotate and what can't rotate, and from there just apply reaction forces or reaction moments to them. So those are all the components we're going to be looking at, and now we can actually start solving some problems.